Chuck Davis was a curious and smart journalistic cat who roamed this city, sopping up every little thing that makes Vancouver, Vancouver. He was also a broadcaster, newspaper man, eclectic artist, historian, who loved facts, tidbits, and talk. Chuck was a storyteller of great renown who was diagnosed with a cancer he could not beat. So he asked his friends to complete his history of metropolitan Vancouver, and they enthusiastically took on the task. It is my pleasure to welcome Alan Gard, journalist, beekeeper, and friend of Chuck Davis to Studio 4 to tell us more. Hi, Fanny. Hi, I had to throw in beekeeper. Yeah, that's very good. I like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> journalist extraordinaire, of course. Well, thank you. <laughs> Still writing for The Courier. I am, yeah. But I spent a little bit of time working on this along with... I like to say Chuck did the first 250 years, mm -hmm. and it took 40 of us to do the last 20. <laughs> How did you meet Chuck Davis? Chuck and I met at uh, what was then BCTV, which mm -hmm. is now Global, mm -hmm. and uh, it was in the early 70s, and between Chuck and I, we were the feature reporters within the news hour, and the two of us had to do 15 minutes of television every day. Which, yeah, That's right. That's a lot. <laughs> that was, yeah, just in mm -hmm. case you don't know, folks, that was a lot. And we could do uh, commentaries, we could do interviews, or we could do film pieces. And, uh, and we did, and we had Al Clapp was, was the producer, and uh, uh, it was very funny watching, because Chuck, as you can tell from reading his book, he, he's really not a political guy. You know, he doesn't have strongly held opinions, but Al always had strongly held opinions. So Chuck would come in in the morning because Al would always have some beef that he, he wanted to push, and so Chuck would say, well, Al, what do I deeply believe today? <laughs> <laughs> so he was just mercilessly funny, you know. Mm, but, uh, mercilessly funny. So we met funny. there, and uh, uh, the other thing I noticed about Chuck was he was not exactly a person of sartorial splendor. I noticed that too. <laughs> I I used to put him on my radio show a lot, so it didn't matter all yeah, that if much. His collar was out a bit, or mm, you a know, little was, rumpled. A little rumpled, yeah. Like, a little dusty. So what was funny was Al would be always on his case about Chuck. You got to get a better jacket. I mean, there's a thread hanging loose. So w what was funny about that was that Al always disported himself like a Fourth Avenue hippie. Mm -hmm. So you had this guy with hair down to his shoulders, beads, you know, bell bottoms that were a bit mm -hmm. ragged, saying, to, "Now, Chuck, you have to clean up your act here." So, <laughs> it anyway, be so that's where we met. And uh, and it was just a great. I think we spent a year and a half working together there. Mm -hmm. I used to use him as uh, my encyclopedia, as most people did in the biz. Uh, yeah. Pat Burns was good too, but the late radio yeah, hotliner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was pretty good, but more politics. But Chuck knew everything about everything about this city. So this guy, we called him our collective memory. Mm. He was Vancouver, but you know, he was grade six. That's as far as he got with his education, was really? grade six. Yeah, so he's autodidact, self-taught, left school at uh, 13 years of age and found work. Uh, he, he lived with his dad. They were very poor when they were uh, living out here, came out mm -hmm. from Winnipeg, then back to Toronto, then back out here. So he just learned it all himself, and he was just brilliant. He, did, he, made, he made up crossword puzzles. He didn't just do crossword puzzles. He made them up, and... Uh, and uh, heaven help anyone that tried to challenge him at Scrabble. <laughs> I didn't. Did you? <laughs> no. When did you know he was uh, dying? How did you find out? I think I found out through a news report because he went to uh, former Mayor Sam Sullivan's, one of his little seances or whatever mm -hmm. they're called. A salon. Uh, oh, a salon. <laughs> a, <laughs> I used to go to the, the saloon. Sam Sullivan's Sam salon. Sam salons, You right? and I go to saloons. <laughs> Other people go, go to, to salons. salons. And he just... I mean, it was typical of, of Chuck. He just thought he would tell everyone. So he got up on stage and he told everyone that I've got weeks, maybe months to live. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got this book that I'm most of the way through and I, I need some help. And then there were news reports. I mean, everyone was kind of in a state of shock. Uh, so that's how I found out. By, I thought, holy doodle. And then the gang came together. Because well, I know that was one of his greatest worries. Not so much death. Well, I don't know that. I mean, death is a bit of a worry, but if, you're, if it's happening If it's to coming, you, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. And, but he really wanted to finish this. He did. And so he was looking for a writer. Uh, but, you know, everyone th at the same time thought, oh, my God, we're going to lose Chuck. We haven't, 
mm. given back to him as much as he's given us. So mm. all of a sudden, the mayor, the city council made a Chuck Davis day. I think they declared it a couple right. times. He got the George Woodcock Award for his literary contributions. Everyone kind of rushed in and said, mm -hmm. what can we do to help? And that included a bunch of people who gathered around Alan Twigg, who's BC Books, right. and and uh, and Howie White, who actually was publisher. the publisher of this book. And uh, I think there, there were maybe 40 of us who got together and tried to divvy it up. And first, the first plan A was, okay, Alan, uh, why don't me, why don't you go out and sit with Chuck and shovel him the research that he's got and get him to write the chapters? And because he had 20 years left to do. He, as I say, you know, the right. last 20 years. <clears throat> so the day before, I was going to go out to Surrey to his little gerbil nest of an office, <laughs> which is just like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> A little disorganized. Um, and help him. He ended up in the hospital. So the day, be the day before, he ended up in the hospital. So I went out and talked to him a couple of times there. But, you know, the first time he was filled with, you know, piss and vinegar and we're going to do this and it's going to start out this way. And the second time, you know, mm. he was going quite quickly. So we ended up on plan B and this is plan B. Well, uh, it's great, I'm eh? I'm telling you, I went to uh, the year I came to this city, oh, yeah. which was the year I immigrated in 1966 to see what was going on. And I'm sure everybody will do something like that. Yeah. The year I was born, the yeah. year I came here, yeah, what yeah. was going on, you know, Jerry Rubin. The yippee. Yeah, yeah. Was uh, went to a faculty club or something. With, UBC with the, faculty club and took it over. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't even know. Well, I guess I was too new in the city or something. But there were uh, so many things going on then and now. What what years were you specifically responsible for? Uh, two thousand and four to two thousand and seven. Mm. During which time I discovered that the cops busted these guys who were doing a B and E on the North Shore. They were breaking into houses and then they decided they would sell their stuff through a garage sale. So the cops busted the garage sale and when the cops got there there was a sign in the middle of the garage sale that said, If you can't find it yet, it will be arriving soon. <laughs> <laughs> so so there's all kinds so we what we tried to do mm -hmm. was, was an interesting challenge because Chuck has a peculiar way of collecting material as you said yes. it's not typical <coughs> history where you have major people doing major <coughs> events it's all these little tidbits and so mm -hmm. on so we had to keep that voice going all the way through the last 20 years you know by finding funny little things and serious things and big things sure. and things. a voice with pictures because as I was leaping through I saw a picture of our dear friend probably your friend too, Bob Hunter. Oh yeah. Uh, one of the Greenpeace founders, one great journalist in this country, funny, funny guy. There Hunter was about 2000, with shades, four and seven. With shades walking down a, a dock, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's interesting, this book has more photos in it than any other book that's been published in this area. And for people at my level of literacy, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> mine, well, mine too. But and let me tell you about the photos. They are black and white, but who cares? Well, the, we have so many photos because people, once again, were incredibly generous. All these photos, I think, came for free. I talked to the archives. I talked to Vancouver Public Library, Pacific Press. They said, it's for Chuck's book, whatever you want. Free Just take good. what you want. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it was just beautiful. And there is one Brian Adams, Brian Adams. when he was just beginning. Yeah. About 1984, yeah. would that be right? Read yeah. the fine print. A Bill Reed sculpture. Brian Adams began his ascent to superstardom with the album Cuts Like a Knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, if we had Vancouver Jeopardy, we'd ace it. We had <laughs> right this here. little book. Everybody's Googling now, but I wonder if you Googled Gassy Jack. I guess you'd get something if you Googled Gassy Jack. Mm -hmm. But what if you uh, Googled Bill Haley? Remember Bill Haley and the Comets? I do. They were the first rock and roll act in Vancouver. I think I was, Red told me that, and then yeah. I looked it up in here, and it, that's and, what it and says. We were, and, and the write-ups were that they were appalled. <laughs> they were, yes. <laughs> it was just an obscenity on the stage. Oh, right? I know. The, all the uh, elders said, uh, this band is depraved. Yeah, that's right. Depraved, Haley. is uh, That Bill Haley, he's and depraved. And that's why we found him so attractive, Fanny. Probably. <laughs> Perhaps we, that's we it. We, too, were depraved. But, you know, who knew? Mayor John Robson, in 1892 got his finger caught in a car door. Did you read that? No. <laughs> he got his finger caught in a car door in London, in F England. Infections, look it up. It's yeah. 1892. Yeah. Infection sets in. He dies. Yes. 
That's probably why we have Robson Street. I didn't get that far to know that if it's named after Mayor John Robson, but BC Premier, sorry, yep. not Mayor. Premier John Robson died in London, England as a result of getting his finger caught in a cab door. That's what I like careful. because you have to read that story, right? You think, well, I've had my finger caught in a door. It didn't die. So, and then as you read on, it says infection set in and Robson was succeeded by Theodore Davy. Hence, we have a Davy Street and a Robson Street, do you think? Yeah. So, but here's the thing about this. You wouldn't read that in a, in a conventional history book. No. You just have big guys doing big things, big policies. But here, with all these little items like this, you really get a feel for what the city was like. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, because there were funny things, odd things like that, funny things like, you know, break and enters and cops and, you know. Yeah, you and know. the first ambulance. Oh, yes, in 1909. First we had mechanized our fir our ambulance. First motorized. After the motorized. Our first motorized ambulance. Before they, when they got rid of the horses. That's right. <laughs> Shortly <laughs> after I got out of high school. Mm -hmm. um, so, so this first ambulance drove around Stanley Park on its test run and ran down an American tourist and killed him. So, I mean, don't laugh. You're laughing. I'm trying not to. <laughs> but That's so why I've Chuck never been finds... able to read the news. I, <laughs> I thought about being a news anchor, and I couldn't because... I know that's a tragedy. It is. American tourists love to hear that story I'm sure for they some do. reason. Because those Canadians. I know. And the, and the fact is, you get hit by an ambulance, you think that's a good thing to be hit by. That's right. Except because at least they could put you right in and take, take you to the, to the hospital. hospital. But this ambulance and the did the job. I know. First day out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wonder what happened to the driver. Either promoted uh, fired, or fired. Do you think <laughs> fired? Perhaps the Hudson's Bay. Who knew? The Hudson's Bay, same corner, October 6th, 1893, at Georgia and Granville, and they have been at that corner ever since, but not in that building. Huh? <laughs> well, the building you know, could have been torn down and rebuilt. Perhaps. Well, it's such a great Christmas book because it is we good. can spout There's lots of and stuff. spout. Yeah. It's, I tell people it's like eating peanuts, you know, once mm -hmm. you start. It's hard to stop. Mm -hmm. And you really do get a feel for uh, the city. I like the... The fact that before there was Safeway, there was the Piggly Wiggly. Now oh. you're you're from south of the border, yes. so there were Piggly Wigglies all Lots over there. Lots of Piggly Wigglies. And remember in Driving Miss Daisy, there was a Piggly Wiggly. Mm -hmm. So we had Piggly Wigglies here before we had Safeway, and Piggly Wigglies went out of business, and Safeway rose up. I didn't in know. This place, yeah. So I didn't there you know. Go. And the White Lunch. Did you ever eat at the White Lunch? Or are you old enough? I wasn't white enough. You no, were I, born. I you wasn't. didn't have to be, but there was segregation in this city. That's right. Up until well, the 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 predecessor to the aquatic center, uh, the Crystal Pool, was segregated mm -hmm. until I think 1945. So uh, men, women, girls, boys, black, uh, white, black, black white, black white, black white. Yeah. So I, you know, we do have some little nasty bits of history in our past, but oh, it's yes, interesting we to do. know. And as I say, you know, Chuck doesn't editorialize about this. It's just there. You know, you mm -hmm. make up your own mind about what And the Howard think. Hughes uh, adventure must be in here when he was staying at the uh, Bay Shore. I think I was part of the stakeout team there. He was in the penthouse for months. Is he there? Yes. Is he still there? Is he Did there? he leave? I know. <laughs> Is uh, he giving he interviews? He was there because we tried to get, remember, as young reporters, we you tried, tried to, to get, get an the, interview. <laughs> the maids to tell us yeah, something. Right. And that, I'll tell you, the security was tight. Just bring down his garbage pail and let me go through it, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is he a neat freak? <laughs> let me see. Uh, the Chuck Davis History of Metropolitan Vancouver. Perfect Christmas gift. How mm -hmm. much is it? Under 50, 50 bucks. bucks. Under 50 bucks? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Three lattes. No, I mean, I don't well, know what you guys yeah. pick. Or a macchiato Nowadays, and a latte. Yeah, yeah and yeah. an eggnog. <laughs> uh, we'll come back with Alan Gar.